Hey YouTube friends, happy almost February. So I got something that I want to talk a little bit about. As you can see, what I've got in front of me is the Ruger American Rimfire Long Range Target offering from Ruger. It's their latest entry into the 22 long rifle market. I know the Ruger American Rimfire series has been out for a little bit, but the Long Range Target has only been available for I don't think it's been available for too long. Uh, when it first came out, I saw that and I said they're directly marketing this to the people that have the Hawkeye series and it's going to be a trainer for those guys, but it looked cool and I wanted to get one. So I was randomly browsing Bud's gun the other day and they had one. So I picked it up, had it for about three weeks now, finally got the chance to get out and shoot it. Now there's not a whole lot of information out there, especially on YouTube, there's zero videos on this. A couple threads here and there with people that have actually got one and got out and shoot it. Um, so what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about the rifle, and then I'll go into the groups. Um, my first impression of this rifle when I got out of the box is really comfortable. The stock is great. It's pretty heavy. Um, then I pulled the trigger. Now, the trigger from this is absolute crap from the factory, and there's a couple videos of people out there you know, doing the pencil spring and all that, so I did that. I didn't really shoot it with that, but I just pulled it a couple times, and it, it was a considerable difference from factory. But... Timney has a trigger that you can swap into these. Now, I will say that it is a bitch. It's not like all the other ones that has two screws in the bottom. You just pull it out and swap the other one on. No, it has roll pins, and you have to punch it out, and it's just a, and you have to take a couple. You have to take the, the safety bar out and put it in the new one. I, anyway, it's a bitch to put in, but I finally got it put in, and it is amazing. Now, they market it to where it's adjustable from one and a half pounds to four pounds, and I personally like a light trigger. So I adjusted it all the way down without where it wouldn't follow the bolt down. And where it wouldn't follow the bolt down, it was pulling roughly 9 ounces. Now 9 ounces, you look at it funny, and it goes off. So I backed it out to about a pound, and that's where I have it now. And it's got a crisp break. I mean, it's a single-stage trigger. just breaks like glass every time. And that, functionality-wise, is the only thing I've done to the rifle so far. And I'll give you a little close-up view here. Uh, as you can see... Single stage trigger, looks great. The rifle has a, it's not full length, but it's got a really long M lock section to where you can mount whatever you want. I just have a bipod mounted in there, and that's it. On top of it, I've got a Diamondback Tactical 6 through 24 by 50 in first focal plane, EBR 2C reticle. Reticle I'm really used to shooting. Um, and if you guys watch my previous videos, you know that I had the Ruger Precision Rimfire. I liked it. It shot pretty well. I had put many rounds through it. And I will say that there has been a couple improvements over that one. Now this one I've got roughly 450 rounds through so far, and that's just today. And out of those rounds, 450 roughly, I have had one failure to extract, and that was my fault because I didn't open the bolt all the way. The Ruger Precision Rimfire, you'd get one like every 10, so I'm really glad they fixed that. And it's got an extended bolt release. It takes a 1022 mags, and it's got a threaded barrel. The barrel's 22 inches long, heavy, heavy contour. Um, the action on this is pretty smooth. It did break in a little bit, and the trigger's great. They suggest that you torque the action screws to 35 inch pounds, so that's what I did. I didn't play around with any of that, um, just left it the way it was. And that's pretty much the specs of this rifle. It's comfy, it's fun to shoot, and having said that, I'll just go ahead and get into how it shoots. And true to form, how I do most of my videos is I have targets that have five spots on each side, and I'll shoot fouling rounds and shoot rounds for groups. Now... This go around, I only shot 20 rounds for fouling because a lot of people said that, that anything more than that or is, is just wasting ammo. And I didn't clean the barrel in between because people were getting super mad about that, saying I cleaned the barrel too much. So that I tried nine different types of ammo. And I live in the Columbus, Ohio area. And today, I'm not going to lie, was not the best day for shooting. It was snowing really hard. And the snow was that really heavy, wet stuff. Um... Something that I did this time that I didn't do in a couple of my previous videos, I was able to shoot it through a chronograph. I picked up a Magneto Speed V3, and that picks up 22 really well. 
So I got one and I'll just show you the groups. Most of this ammo is pretty easy to pick up off the shelf or off the internet uh, apart from a couple of them and I'll show you. I'm All the groups are at 50 yards. I measured them with a caliper because using the Ballistic X-Ax just takes way too long and I got tired of doing it. So I'll get right into it. I measured for velocity, standard deviation in the group. Uh, so. The first ammo that I tried was one of my personal favorites, it's the Aguila, 40 grain. This stuff's actually, it's super cheap, but it works pretty well at distances past 200 yards, 40 grains. Um, here's the target. This one did not like it at all. Some of these groups aren't even, aren't even discernible. I mean, they were like, I was like, what's going on? And it wasn't that windy. Even though it was snow, and I would say it was consistently four to five miles an hour. You get a couple that group together, but these, I mean, this one's all the way over here. Anyway, it was averaging about 11.38 standard deviation of 18.9. Shot like absolute crap. It's cheap. I have a bunch of them. I'm just going to keep it for whatever. Um, but this, this gun did not like it. So moving on. Next was the Federal Target, and you can get this pretty much at any big box store. I've seen a couple people that like this. It's kind of expensive. I think it's like $6 a box or something like that. It's a uh, 40 grain, pretty much just like the rest of them. And this particular rifle, again, didn't shoot it very well. And you can see the groups are not, not that great. Mm. What happened on this one? That's not wind, that's not anything. The rifle just didn't shoot it very well. So the group average a little over one inch, which is two minutes at 50 yards for a 22. Definitely not worth the money, at least for this one. I mean, other people's guns might shoot well, but this one doesn't. So moving on. Next is my personal favorite for the Ruger Precision Rimfire. The Tika shoots it well. It's a really expensive. Ely Target. This stuff is like $70 for a brick. Worked well for me. They rated at 1090 um, but again the velocity is going to vary for this one it's a 22 inch barrel something I'm not really used to uh, it didn't shoot it that great group size was 705 now something that was funny again you're paying $70 a brick for this stuff and the 15 shot out of the fouling groups was 600 or 695 feet per second this is a squib load I was aiming at this one here and it hit all the way down here. I mean, you 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 can't get that in a seventy dollar a brick ammo. A little bit disappointed in how that shot this. But in the standard deviation, I took that shot out, and it was still at twenty feet per second. It was not very good at all. So it's kind of crappy. But anywho, next super popular round. Haven't really had good luck with this stuff. SK standard. I think it's like six or seven dollars a box or something like that. Um, here's the groups. Average point six nine nine, not stellar. I just I, I don't know if it's me or my guns that just they don't shoot it well. So I mean, and it's going slow too. I mean, it's only ten thirteen feet per second with a standard deviation of thirteen. It's still not very good. Um, one thing I will say is that magneto speed V three didn't drop a single shot it was really snowy and rainy and it just it picked up every single shot so if you're in the market for a good chronograph or a 22 go ahead and pick that one up but don't pick this ammo up if you have this rifle don't shoot it very good next my favorite i've got four check that five thousand rounds of it standard velocity and i think it's everybody's favorite everybody that always comments on my videos is like you're going you're doing something wrong if you're not shooting standard velocity well Got tons of it. 5,000 rounds. Love it. This one shot it very okay. Very okay. And as you can see, some good, some bad. This, out of the nine types of ammo that I tried today, had the lowest standard deviation of 8.6. Now that's 45 rounds, and that's really good. The Tika, which has a, I think it's an 18 or 20 inch barrel, shoots this at an average velocity of... 1070 so I'm only losing about 10 feet per second and that's at a very limited 
um, pool, I guess you could say. I haven't shot this enough, but the group size is 0.659. I mean, like I said, not, not the best in the world, but for how cheap it is and how consistent it is, it's you can't beat it. So there's standard velocity, CCI. Not bad. Next, 22 Plinkster's favorite. I try it on all my guns just because green tag. And I just, I can't get it to shoot as well as everybody says it does. Um, as you can see here, averaging about 1043 feet per second, standard deviation 13.1, and the group size is 0.63. The bottom one had a flyer, also to be a little smaller, but it's—I mean, I, I just, it's not that great. I don't know; it doesn't shoot well for me. But so far, out of those ammo's that I tried, and again, like I said, not making excuses, but today wasn't the best day to be out shooting. I was wet, I was cold, I was rushing. Not my best day, but I would expect it to shoot a little bit better than this. Okay, next, Wolf. Match Extra. Now, they have two, Match Extra and Match Target. And now these are made by Ely. I didn't know that until I looked at the bottom of the case and had an E on it. Which kind of surprised me. But it was averaging around 1071, which is a little bit faster than most of them shoot. At least the, the pretty common ones. Group size is .69. And I measured all these with just calipers, like I said. Center to center, as close as I could get them. Um, a couple good groups, at least on the fouling, you can kind of see. Um, I think this was like five ninety nine a box or something like that. And this, it's kind of hard to find. And I found this match extra and an ammo that I'll show you in a little bit that was kind of a splurge buy, but the match extra wasn't wasn't that good. Anyway, next. So this is the ammo that I was talking about that I splurged a little bit. And I've only seen this because Voodoo posted something about how Lopua, you can send your rifle off to them and they'll match the ammo to whatever MOA rating you want. Um, and I feel kind of silly. But this is Lopua X-Act. Now this is $25 for 50 and the site that I found the wolf stuff on that you could buy it by the box had this. So you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a shot. Twenty five dollars or twenty two ammo for fifty. And I'm glad that I had the chronograph to shoot this through, just so we could see how it performed. And I'll show you the groups. And it was not good. Standard deviation of 13.9. I mean, 25, 50 cents around, you you figure it would shoot through the same hole. Now, I will say that I didn't have enough. I'd only, want, only bought one box because I want to try it through the Tika too, so I didn't have fouling rounds. But as you can see, I mean, there's a couple good ones, like the 328. That's pretty good. It's about how you'd expect it to shoot. And the top group was a flyer. Um, but still, I mean, it's only going 1041. Standard deviation was not like you'd expect for 50 cents around 22 ammo. Glad I got it. Going to try it out of the Tika and then never think about this again. And I know that people are going to say, well, that's only for your Anschutz or your, you know, your Olympic style rifles. But I mean, it should shoot good out of anything. But I mean, the gun just wasn't shooting that good today. And neither was I. But worth a try. Average slightly over a minute. 0.544. Looks exactly like Center X. It probably is the same thing as Tretch three times as much but anyway next wolf match target and I know this has been a favorite for people for a really long time they started making them in the hard boxes that come in the Ely because like I said it's made by Ely this was the second to best that this one shot for me today it's going about 1045 feet per second, standard deviation of 11.6. Group was slightly over a minute. A couple decent ones in there. Shot okay. Flyer on the second one to the top, and that wouldn't have been so bad. But, I mean, still, it doesn't shoot exactly like you think a $500 22 would shoot. Might buy this again. 
probably just stick with CCI standard velocity, but pretty pretty popular. It, it's hard to find this by the box. A lot of places only sell it by the case. So got a couple. Glad I tried it out. Not not awful, not good. Pretty mediocre. So the best of the day is to nobody's surprise. Shoots the best out of all my 22s. Center X. Everybody in the world shoots this stuff. And and for good reason. I mean, it's it works well. It, it goes. You don't have as many flyers. Especially the first round on 22 flyers is pretty common. I'll show you the group. Still slightly over a minute. Um, even the fouling rounds, it was shooting pretty good. Top on a 308 was probably the best group I shot for the day. And the standard deviation was a little bit higher. I mean, like I said, it, you're basing it off of CCI standard velocity, which was in eight, I mean, single digit feet per second for 22, 45 rounds is pretty darn good. But this stuff is good. I'll probably get a couple cases of it just because it shoots so well. But anyway, not making excuses. Shitty day for shooting, but I'm glad I got this out. I don't have a lot of opportunities to get out and shoot anymore just because I'm so busy all the time. But this gun, my overall thoughts are the factory trigger is absolutely terrible. You have to do the trigger job at least, at the very least. And if you don't want to do that and you have a little bit of extra money to spend, buy the Timney because it, it it's great. Best part of the rifle. It's comfy, and it looks good, and it's got the flush cups and the adjustable uh, cheek riser. 30-minute base. People were saying that it doesn't have a 30-minute base, but it does. I can, t I can tell you because it says right on it. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Love to hear your comments about this, and uh, take care.